Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another in-person video for your Java series. We're gonna be talking about encapsulation. As we go through some of this object-oriented stuff, I wanna occasionally jump back in person just to talk about a concept face-to-face -face, or face-to-camera in this situation. But anyways, by going through the concepts when we start coding, it'll make a lot more sense rather than just typing but really not having any idea what you're trying to accomplish. So the in-person videos will help you get that concept down and then we'll go into hands-on and code it out. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. So encapsulation is one of the three big pieces of object-oriented programming. We got encapsulation, we got inheritance, and we got polymorphism. And we're gonna talk about each one of these in the rest of these videos. But we're just gonna focus on the, uh, the first one, <laughs> forgot what it was for a second, encapsulation, which the whole idea of this is to hide the inner details of something. So we can basically encapsulate something that way not everything is exposed to the whole world. And the biggest place you're gonna see this is with class level variables. So let's say we have a variable. You may also hear field or various versions, but essentially we created a variable at the class level, not within a method. So this is going to be accessible all throughout the class. When we instantiate this class into an object, we can assign values to this. So for example, if we were working with users, we might have a first name variable and we might have a last name variable. And then when I create a user for me, I might say Caleb and Curry for those variables. So we can encapsulate this. And the way we do that is with two types of methods known as getters and setters. So we have a getter method and a setter method. And now consider us over here. And we want to work with this variable. If we wanna get that value, we have to go through the getter and then it'll give us the value back. If we wanna set that value, well then we need to go through the setter and it'll update that value. The benefit here is that inside of these methods, we can do some fine grain customization or determine how the variable will be returned or determine what kind of valid values can be assigned to this variable. That is the essence of encapsulation and you're gonna see this concept all throughout computer science, not just at the, the fine grain detail of variable. If you think of a concept in general, you can apply encapsulation to hide the inner workings and you can swap out that inner workings without affecting the interface for working for it. So to see that, you could basically envision changing this structure to a circle instead of a square. <laughs> and the actual part over here doesn't change. I'm still working with the getter, I'm still working with the setter, but the structure behind it changes. So that's another example of encapsulation at a bigger level in computer science. But next video, we're gonna be creating some getters and setters, so go check that out and be sure to subscribe.